Hey, so uh, this is um, this is part one of uh, a vehicle modeling and rigging and uh, importing into Unreal Engine tutorial. Um, I'm just going to focus on the actual 3D modeling component right now, and uh, I'm going to be using Maya, which I've been using for about 24 hours now, so you can watch me bumble my way through the interface. Um, I'm just going to do a really simple vehicle mesh and then a really simple rig and show you how to export it and then the next video will actually cover um, creating a drivable vehicle. So there's a couple things to do to make sure that you're set up for um, Unreal Export. Uh, first thing is to check the grid. I'm using 512 by 256 by 16 or rather with 16 subdivisions. We'll go over to settings and check the couple things here. Check that the world coordinate system, the Z is the up axis instead of Y. Mine defaulted to Y. I'm also using centimeters as the linear working unit. Um, this seems to work fine, I think, because Unreal Engine's Unreal units map to one centimeter. Uh, although I'm not sure if that's just because the example levels I'm using are small enough. But it seems okay for now. If you have problems, you can switch everything to meters. Just make sure to do it universally. Um, so after increasing the grid size, uh, you may notice that you can't see anything. So down here in the panel view, go to the camera attribute editor, find the far clip plane. And you can change this. So if I do it, turn it to 10, I can't see anything. Uh, but if I turn it to 10,000, I can see the whole grid. Cool. So. I think that's it. We can actually just check that our grid is a nice size. Looking for something like 16. Yeah, we're cool. So I'll just start with a cube. Maybe do something like 8 by 6. Oh, you know what? And you want to make sure that um, down here is a little gizmo. You want to make sure that you keep in mind where forward is, so positive x is forward. Eight by six, bring that guy up a little bit. Make some sort of awesome aerodynamic shape. Yeah, it looks really great. Okay, cool. So I have something remotely useful. Um, just going to bring that up. Not that. Can bring the whole body up. Going to name it while I'm in here. And now we can start drawing. I actually use cylinders as, as the wheels so we can start drawing those guys. Seems all right. That's cool. And just rotate and make the blue line straight. Uh, these are a little big. Yeah, maybe something like that's cool. Then keeping in mind that uh, positive X is forward, this would be the right rear wheel. So we can name that and then let's duplicate that. I'm using uh, command D, actually duplicate the mesh and then drag it out in a new position. I'm not being very scientific about my units, so we'll have a pretty wobbly car. But that's cool. So I'm just gonna make sure all these guys are named right rear. This will be right front. Uh, 
and then the left root here. Cool. So yeah, just name them all. Makes it easier to look at. Easier to do the um, rigging later too. So at this point, we can actually start putting the skeleton together. Uh, we'll start with the root bone. So open a skeleton, joint tool. I like to just make sure that there's a some kind of radius on the bone so I can actually see it. So do a single click, enter, create the bone. Uh, whatever, give it a radius of like 10 or something. Clear the transform and actually drag it into place here. So just try to put this in the center of the body. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it probably does if you want to, you know, make a final mesh and rig, but for our purposes, it's fine. Um, actually going to lower the body a little bit more, more of a buggy sort of look to this thing. And bring this joint down a little bit and name this guy root. Let this be the root bone here. Um, then you can duplicate this thing, put them in each wheel. Try to get it in the middle. I mean, you know, the closer to the center of the wheel, the better. The less uh, wobbly the wheel will be. But I kind of like it a little wobbly, so I don't really care. Um, this will be left front. So it's very important to name the bones correctly here. So just make sure that, you know, positive x axis and you naming the bones appropriately. Command D, you can duplicate this guy, bring him back, and make a left rear joint. And same thing. Duplicate and drag across. Also, if you're brand new to Maya, uh, like me, the, the um, you can hit spacebar to get this split orthographic view which is really handy for lining stuff up. All right, cool. Get the right rear. Then bring this last guy forward, make a right front. Cool, so if we take a look at the, um, take a look at the outliner, you should be able to see everything. It should be named. And just, you can double check, like, don't know why these names in sync, but anyway, I have body here. Uh, right rear wheel, right front wheel, left front, left rear wheel, cool. Uh, then these guys look good, that's cool. So now we're actually going to parent these wheel joints to the root bone component. Uh, the way I like to do that is I just grab the left front or for example, I grab the child bone and then I select the root and then I go to skeleton, connect joint, make sure it's parent. And you should see this um, nested menu pop in and that'll show you the uh, parent-child relationship. So just do the same thing for all the subsequent bones. Cool. These guys all look good, and now we can actually, now that we have a bit of a rig, actually it's nice to maybe see the rig, so we can turn on, um, in the panel shading menu, we can turn on x-ray here, and you can see, uh, you can actually see the bones through the mesh, which is nice, especially easy if you're working with them and you need to grab them. So now I'm actually going to attach the rig to the mesh, so select the root and the body here, go to skin, just make sure the smooth bind is set up correctly. Select the joints, that's cool. Closest distance, classic linear. Go ahead and bind it. Now what we've done is we've actually bound our root bone to our mesh. We'll do the same with um, each wheel to its uh, mesh counterpart. Just make sure you're selecting the right names.
cool so that's pretty much it we want to make sure that uh things are bound properly so we can do a little sanity check what you can do is grab the bone and do some you know like rotate it whatever and it should rotate the wheel and you can sort of see the effects of um having the the joint somewhat poorly positioned when you rotate it kind of wobbles around so it'll look pretty funny it probably won't drive well but whatever uh so it's i like to just like actually do this with the outliner it forces me to check the names so grab the root drag it cool grab the left front make sure that we're rotating the left front actually rotates the left front wheel you want to make sure that that pairing is correct same with the right rear left rear in this case cool that looks good so we can save this guy i'm just going to override something i had in here same as trapezoid car um exceedingly aerodynamic trapezoid car and then we can uh, actually get the export set up for Unreal Engine. So I don't think I had to change much for this. I did have to turn on smoothing groups. Uh, disabled cameras and lights, you won't need those. Um, like I said earlier, I'm using centimeters for units. That seems to work fine. Um, if you're having problems and you want to switch to meters, then make sure you just do it here and in the world settings. Um, or in the like, uh, yeah, working units in the Maya preferences. So yeah, Z for up. Um, and I'm using a 2013 export that quelled the Unreal Engine import warning that I was getting. I think it probably works with the 2014, but whatever. So I'm actually going to export this guy over. I'm going to overwrite. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, so the next video will actually cover um, importing the rig into the skeletal mesh into um, Unreal and uh, making something drivable.